really suggest that you find some somewhere to sit because it's gonna take like 30 minutes and you'll be tired. So we talk some chair. Sit on. There is an empty chair. There is a table you can sit on, or you can bring a chair. No, <laughs> no, I will not persuade you. Okay, all right. And in the back there are some chairs as well. Okay, fine. So I'm very happy to uh, welcome. Uh, well. Nicole, I will show you the audience so that you know who you are talking to. These are our uh, students, university students, actually they are future teachers, all of them. Most of them are uh, teachers of English, English language in a, um, uh, double majors. Do we have double majors here as well? Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, I would like the audience, let me welcome uh, Nikola Lehotska, who is our PhD student at our department, uh, and she's a very special lady because, well, she, first of all, she finished her master's at Michigan University. Am I right, Nicole? Just uh, you are Eastern the, Michigan. Eastern Michigan, Eastern Michigan University. Mm -hmm. And uh, she will tell you a bit about her research that she was doing. And so I'm not going to comment on that, but she's also a very active person in a Slovak chamber of English language teachers. And we will discuss that and uh, they are organizing events for English teachers. And uh, it's a really great organization. Unfortunately, it was silent for several months because of due to COVID, but it's gonna be active again. And uh, so this is also something that she has been doing. And well, she will tell you more about herself. Yeah, so the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, is it okay? Can you see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. Great. So thank you everyone again for coming um, to my presentation, empowering young learners to become change makers through a virtual exchange. So I was already introduced, uh, but I am a graduate of the Mate Bell University. Um, I uh, graduated uh, uh, with a degree from English and French, translation and interpreting. After that, I was a teacher and a participant of Teach for Slovakia, um, meaning that I was teaching in a small rural school in Eastern Slovakia for two years. Afterwards, I did my master's in teaching English to speakers of other languages at Eastern Michigan University, where I also researched um, virtual exchanges um, in Slovakia. And currently, I work at the Ministry of Education, and I'm also a doctoral student. So that was about me. Um, this is my personal journey with virtual exchanges, because that's going to be uh, one of the focuses of this presentation. Uh, so um, when I was a student, I remember that um, my teacher engaged our classroom in this exchange of postcards. Uh, afterwards, I started experimenting with virtual exchanges um, or with simple, um, simple ways how I approached virtual exchanges. Um, so, for example, my students just exchanged messages on social media. Then I explored e-twinning uh, a little bit. And um, I really uh, got into virtual exchanges when I was doing my um, research and writing my master thesis um, on virtual exchanges among Slovak EFL teachers. Um, and afterwards, I did two virtual exchanges, one um, engaged learners at primary level and the other one engaged learners at secondary level. Um, and today I will tell you more about change makers virtual exchange with young learners. So these are the goals of the session. I hope that by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to tell 
some benefits of virtual exchanges. You'll be able to articulate reasons for engaging in virtual exchanges. Uh, together, we'll reflect on this um, sample virtual exchange program that I did with uh, Slovak learners and US-based Michigan learners. And hopefully, uh, when this presentation is over, you'll be able to apply steps in empowering your learners. So now, uh, a little introductory um, interactive activity. So I would like to ask you to share with your elbow partner uh, answers to these two questions. So what do you think a virtual exchange is and what relevant experience do you have with virtual exchange? So let's maybe take two to three minutes. Yeah, they are working. I will show you. Maybe one more minute. Okay, good. Uh, thank you. So this is really hard to, to monitor what's going on in there uh, while being so far away. But just by a quick show of hands, um, how many of you uh, have a personal experience with virtual exchanges? Just raise your hand if you do. Okay, one, two, um, good. So there are some people uh, who have some experience, uh, great. So virtual exchanges, uh, just to summarize it, virtual exchanges are projects where students from different parts of the world communicate with each other via technology. And maybe you have stumbled upon this practice um, with some other names. So in literature and articles, um, it can virtual exchanges can be also called telecollaboration projects, OIEs or online intercultural exchanges or even it can be referred to as collaborative online international learning. So this is just to have a little bit of background. Uh, usually these are the most common outcomes uh, of virtual exchanges and reasons why teachers engage in virtual exchanges. So th those reasons are here on the slide. Uh, so teachers engage because uh, learners can develop their language proficiency, uh, they can improve their intercultural communicative competence, they become more autonomous in their learning, and they also improve their digital literacies. These are some other benefits for students mentioned in literature. So virtual exchanges tend to improve also attitude, uh, students' attitude towards learning. They improve students' collaborative skills, their creativity, and uh, the 21st, or the skills that we refer to as 21st century skills. But there are also some benefits for teachers. 
Um, so when I was doing my uh, thesis, um, I found out from the literature that these are the most common um, reasons why teachers engage um, in virtual exchanges. So they want to do something different for the learners. They like this learning by doing approach. Uh, thanks to virtual exchanges, they can also network with other teachers and they, they're also part of this professional development. So they improve their, let's say, project-based teaching skills, collaborative skills, communication skills, and so on. Uh, these are types of tasks that teachers usually use in virtual exchanges. Um, Odoubt and where um, they categorized tasks um, uh, into three different categories. So teachers usually start with uh, information exchange. This first category of tasks serves to establish some type of report uh, relationship between the two groups of students. So they really feel motivated and engaged in the project. Then teachers uh, can move uh, to comparison and analysis. So for example, as information exchange, two groups of, of students would exchange videos. Then they would engage in comparing the videos and contrasting, looking for similarities, differences. Maybe the videos would be about their daily routines and they would look for similarities and differences in their daily routines. And finally, there's this final uh, category of tasks, collaboration. So two groups of students collaborate either in their local teams or in mixed international teams. Um, and they create, uh, they work on um, creating either an e-magazine, a poster, a presentation, or any other product. So some virtual exchanges, they are based only on one of these categories. Some integrate all three of them or only two of them. It really depends on the teacher, on the designer of the exchange. So that was a little bit of background, a little bit of uh, literature, let's say. And now I will go into uh, more practical things. So I will uh, present you the virtual exchange that I did in 2020. An informal name for this virtual exchange was Change Makers, uh, because the main focus of the exchange was on developing our students' identities as um, change makers, as someone who can change things in their local communities. So we had two groups of students. I will talk um, about them a little bit later. Uh, but each group of students uh, had or chose their own project, chose their own topic they wanted to work on. So for example, the US-based uh, Michigan learners, they decided that they would like to help a local animal shelter by collecting donations and material help. And also they wanted to create this awareness campaign. The Slovak group of students, on the other hand, chose different issue they wanted to tackle. Uh, so they really wanted to protect their protect environment and contribute to positively impacting the environment. So they decided to create this swap market, an event where they would exchange items and clothes at their school. Uh, so that's the intro. As I already mentioned, we had two groups of students. Slavic learners were fifth graders. According to CEFR, their English language proficiency ranged from pre-A1 to A1+. Plus. Uh, their first language was Slovak, so it was a pretty homogenous group. And uh, we, or their teacher, uh, I didn't lead this group of students, uh, but their teacher uh, worked on the virtual exchange as part of their English class. So they didn't dedicate every English class to this virtual exchange, but once in a while they, they worked on their virtual exchange project. On the other hand, US-based learners, uh, so I'm not calling them US learners because um, 
as you can see, uh, they were pretty multilingual and they had um, they had various first languages. Uh, so, for example, their first languages included Spanish, French, Amharic, Albanian, Swahili, and Arabic. They were also fit a fourth and fifth graders, and so they tested at WIDA. Uh, that's an assessment used uh, in the U.S. Uh, one, two, three, but that would translate to CFR A to about A1, A2. And we work on this virtual exchange as part of an after school program that was supposed to last for eight weeks, but then a uh, COVID-19 pandemic hit and we had to cut it short by almost a half. So uh, we had the focus of the exchange was threefold. So number one, language focus. Uh, we set specific explicit goals for language development. So we wanted our learners to develop writing and orally asking interview questions. And we wanted to focus on language used in posters, flyers, and videos. Because as I mentioned, our, our learners chose to create awareness campaign. Also, we wanted to, as far as culture, we wanted our learners to learn about citizenship and public good across cultures. And when it came to skills, uh, our main focus was developing this I can mindset, empowering them. Uh, so as our special element uh, to develop the I can mindset uh, mainly. We used um, this uh, four step framework by Design for Change, which is an international movement that kind of guides educators uh, to develop um, this I can mindset in their students. And now I'm going to tell you more about it and about the four different stages of the design for change design thinking process. So number one is feel. Um, the purpose of this stage is for students to just observe, uh, to kind of brainstorm issues that uh, they stumble upon um, in their daily lives. And uh, as part of this stage, they were also supposed to vote on one of the issue that they would like to address in this project. Then uh, step number two uh, is to imagine all the possible solutions to tackle that issue, to tackle that problem. Um, and after, again, they were supposed to choose one solution that best addressed the issue or the problem. Three, uh, they created their action plan. So they were really thinking about the budget they have, the resources they have. They uh, took into consideration the members of their teams. Uh, they divided roles among the team members. Afterwards, they implemented their action plans and then they reflected on their action plan. And number four is share. Uh, so students are supposed to share also the, the progress of their project to kind of share with the world, with the community, their successes, but also maybe areas for improvement. So this is what we used um, in this virtual exchange to help students um, kind of work on their chosen topics, on their chosen issues. Uh, I would also like to emphasize or highlight uh, this Design for Change website. So what we used from this website was um, the toolkits and lesson plans. Um, so, for example, when it comes to one week lesson plan, uh, you can find seven 45 minute lesson plans on the website. You can also find examples of learners projects from all over the world, uh, some potential topics to explore. 
Um, and if you don't want to do the project right away with your student, you can just um, kind of inspire uh, your students with some reading material that is accessible to students on the website as well. So the stories from the students um, are accessible on the website in the form of comics. Uh, so that can be really engaging to, to students, to young learners as well, just to read about other young learners all over the world that are change makers in their local communities. So the way we did this virtual exchange is that we started with that simple information exchange. We wanted our students at first to get to know each other. So both groups of students, they did these videos where they introduced themselves. So for example, uh, the US-based learners, uh, it's uh, this video on the right. Uh, so they divided themselves in different groups and each group chose um, the format of their video. So for example, this girl, her group um, chose Playground to introduce themselves. Afterwards, uh, we followed the Feel, Imagine, Do, Share framework. Uh, and I created this Google Doc that was shared with uh, both groups of learners. With So we had, three columns there. In the first column, we had the name, we had a name of the stage, and then guiding questions um, that were supposed to help students to think about that stage. Um, and then there were two columns. One was for the US-based learners, and the other one was for the Slovak learners. And each group of students, they answered the questions. And since it was online, um, the document was accessible and we kind of worked with this document. We often um, read the other teams, the other groups answers, and we compared, uh, for example, their action plan, how their action plan differed from our action plan and what similarities uh, they found in their action plan. We also used e-twinning platform, TwinSpace. Uh, so we just, where we just upgraded um, um, each other. So learners left very simple messages to each other. So I mentioned that their English language proficiency wasn't as advanced, but it was still possible. And the final step uh, was the collaboration, the culmination of the project. So as I mentioned, the Slovak learners, they wanted to do the swap market. They wanted to exchange clothes, toys, and items among each other. Um, so what, they wouldn't have to shop for more. Um, so since the COVID pandemic hit, they kind of had to uh, organize the swap market on a smaller scale. I think that they organized it uh, just uh, on the level of their classroom. Um, on the other hand, with the US-based learners, uh, we managed to, uh, or our learners managed to uh, brainstorm three possible solutions, how they would like to tackle uh, the issue. Uh, the issue that they saw in their community was that there were a lot of stray animals and there was this local animal shelter that was helping the stray animals and was kind of providing a um, um, home for these animals as well. So they decided to go in three directions. They decided to make an awareness campaign, um, collect material and financial donations, and also create toys. And since uh, they couldn't really choose, they couldn't really vote on only one uh, solution, they decided to go with all three of them, and they divided themselves in three groups. So each group tackled a uh, different, different solution they managed to create their action plans and that was really inspiring to see because according to one of the teachers that was helping us 
uh, with this uh, after school program, she said that there were some students who used to be quite passive during the classes, but when they were thinking of the action plans, you saw sparks in their eyes and they were really excited that they were able to do something. Uh, but as I mentioned, the COVID pandemic hit, uh, so our schools were closed and we didn't really proceed with actually realizing the action plan, implementing the action plan, reflecting on the action plan and then sharing the success. So we stopped there, unfortunately. So these are some uh, takeaways. One of the biggest highlights for me was that this whole virtual exchange, this whole program was built around asset-based pedagogy. So we really focus on developing our learners' identities as capable of doing positive things in their local communities. Um, on the other hand, um, as every virtual exchange, we also uh, stumbled upon some challenges. So there was this COVID pandemic, time difference, so six hours between um, those two groups of students and lack of time. So I wish we had more time and we had, I wish we had the time to finish the, the project with the US-based learners as well. Some practical recommendations. Uh, if you are going to um, organize a virtual exchange for your students, the learners, always create enough space for students to get to know each other and don't un underestimate the importance of that initial information exchange state, stage because they are, the students, the learners are more motivated to, to be engaged in the virtual exchange. Include some synchronous meetings, um, even if your learner's um, English proficiency is not as advanced. Uh, the learners, they're very, they're very excited just to see um, children like themselves living somewhere else. Uh, if you can use internationally mixed groups, so after you establish this um, person, this report among these two groups, and after they feel comfortable, um, you can also opt for internationally mixed group activities. Uh, give students enough opportunities to make choices. So as you saw um, in this virtual exchanges, students chose their topic. They chose their issue they wanted to work on. They also chose their activities and their final product. Set goals, set explicit goals in language and skills development area. And don't forget about regular reflective activities. So these are some resources. If you are interested, I'm going to share with you my email at the end. So uh, I can also share with you this presentation so it's clickable. Um, I have a lesson plan breakdown from that uh, virtual exchange or after school program. Um, one sample lesson plan and also an article that my partners and I wrote about the virtual, about the after school program. So these were my partners and the virtual exchange and I would like to thank them very much. Uh, and final reflective activity. I'm not, I wasn't really following the time. Uh, so I hope I wasn't speaking that fast. But again, with your elbow, par elbow partner, please share a thought on something, one thing at least you really liked or resonated with you, surprised you, or maybe you're leaving with a question. So let's take maybe two minutes.
Okay, again, it's really hard to tell um, if the conversation is still going or uh, if I should move on, but I can move on. And if there are some questions, we can always go back to them at the end. Um, so these are the references uh, that I used throughout the presentation. And uh, thank you. Uh, this is my email. So if you think of a question maybe later um, and you want to ask it, you can always email me. Thank you very much. much. Uh, maybe we still have like two or three minutes if, in case you have any questions. Because now I imagine that, you know, next year, some of those people or these people are going to teach. And in case that they are interested in uh, being part of some kind of virtual program, or where shall they start? Or how can they, you know, they have an idea, they are motivated and the, where to start. Mm -hmm. So in Slovakia, if you are staying in Europe, I recommend starting with e-twinning. E-twinning, do you know e-twinning program? No, yes, some of them not, some of them shake their heads. Okay, so e-twinning program, so there's a website, I suppose, and there are some people, coordinators who are ready to help, right? Uh, even e-twinning has, um, so it has like a feel Slovak uh, version um, or cord we have some Slovak coordinators here. Um, but if you go to, I think it's eTwinning. So this is eTwinning's website. That's the European one. Um, but I think that if you type eTwinning Slovakia, yeah, eTwinning.sk, uh, they organize plenty of webinars um, and workshops. So if you don't know how to start, uh, just go to this Slovak's eTwinning uh, website and maybe start with a simple seminar, uh, first steps in international projects, for example, or creative use of uh, some other types of tools. Um, this can inspire you or give you some basic idea how to work with eTwinning, how to set up a virtual exchange. So this may be a great idea of how to start. And I have this uh, very personal question. Can, can we see uh, just a, a short part of the videos that you included? And I was looking forward to see the children and you just, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was like, I wasn't sure um, of the time, but yeah, we can see both of them. I think that we have enough time. So let's yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Maybe not like this. Uh, this one. Maybe the uh, yeah. Working. So this is that U.S. group. Yeah, yeah this is the U.S.-based uh, group. Can you hear the sound? Not, not yet. Uh, okay, so it's probably, is that a YouTube, um, yeah, video YouTube, so you need to share the screen and allow the sound, probably, yeah, turn, off. turn off, sharing screen, like, no, uh -huh. okay, so I should turn, share, share again, but now, uh -huh, but, yeah, but you tick, you tick, allow the sound. Okay, so let me Left open bottom. it. Now mm -hmm. you need to share the screen okay. again, like with the... Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. yep. Good. Yeah, now it's fine.
So that was one of them. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find the second one. No, I think it's on uh, different. Never mind. Okay, so we have seen. So these were the videos that were made by the by the students, right? By the children. So well, mm -hmm. the, the teacher's role is just to coordinate, to support, motivate, and maybe organize their work. But uh, what is the best thing about it that they are really activated to uh, to do it by themselves, right? So it's it's uh, very yeah. I mean, you can always you could always sell them as a teacher. Okay, stand there and oh, this is our text, and we're going to read this out loud. But then that's not really the point. The yeah. point is to design overall activity let's say okay now we need to introduce ourselves so how can we introduce ourselves and give them the power um, to decide how they want to introduce themselves mm -hmm. yeah because now i grew up in the generation where the pet friends were you know active so we were sending to our russian friends some chewing gums and you know some postcards and letters and now this modern virtual world expands and gives us really great opportunities to to fly you know uh, at one place great good ah uh, yeah there is a question mm -hmm. She actually cannot hear you. I need to just mediate the question. It's okay. But just uh, make the, the the story short is that, yeah, the, the, the language discrepancy between the, the group of US children, and you mentioned that they were of various nationalities, right? But still they are surrounded by American English versus our children whose English is developed just through English language uh, lessons. Right, like was it visible or was it uh, discrepancy between so, those groups? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so it really depends. Uh, so, for example, in this virtual exchange, uh, there was there were some US based learners whose English was really good, and then there were some learners who had like no English at all, almost. Um, they were in the US, uh, but um, some of them, for example, arrived only three months ago. So the, the issue or the real challenge in working with that US-based group was mm, more about different proficiency level among themselves. On the other hand, Slovak group, uh, yes, let's say that by average, their English proficiency was lower, but in this case, it didn't really matter uh, because with the US-based learners, we focused more on that, as I said, asset-based pedagogy. So we really wanted them to feel that even though they're in the US and their English is not as uh, perfect as Native American students' English, they are still 
they're still valuable for their communities. The focus on with the Slovak group was more language based. So the exchange was there. So they participated in exchange to develop language, whereas with English based learn US based learners, we focus on that skills, the mindset development. Uh, one more thing I was um, do, do so com community development, right? Yes, mm -hmm. um, but so that English discrepancy or that English advantage is not always necessarily on the US based learner side. Um, there was this another exchange that I did with high school students. And in that exchange, it was the other way around. So I had this group of Slovak EFL, EFL learners. So they were from bilingual gymnasium in Slovakia. And I had a group of US based learners. Most of them uh, spoke Arabic and um, Bengali. And there, Slovak learners' English was somewhere between C1, C2, whereas US based learners' English was somewhere between A2, B1. And yes, that can cause that can cause sometimes problems, uh, but um, you know, you there are still some accommodations that you can take take to kind of balance it out. Okay, so. Uh... Yes, so so uh, we are sending you our positive feelings and gratitude for everything that you're doing and we will meet Nicola in person definitely because she's also a part of our department. So she will come and share everything with us once it's possible. So thank you very much. So the last support of the... Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Now, may I ask you 15-minute break for those who are coming back and we start at 11 o'clock, okay? <laughs>